Now, senior government figures are fearing today that Russia, China and Iran are fueling a lot of these wild conspiracies and theories about the Princess of Wales health. And they're doing it to destabilise the nation. So, as you know, it's been a difficult couple of weeks for the royal family, from speculation about the photoshopped portraits to Kate announcing she has cancer. So do we owe them an apology? Join us now at the Royal Biographer, Ingrid Seward. Ingrid, um, morning to you. First time we've spoken to you since um, mm -hmm. Kate's very moving and I thought very powerful uh, statement to camera on Friday. Um, do we owe an apology? Was there too much of a clamour for more information? There was too much of a clamour, but that is human nature. And I don't think that either William or Kate would like an apology because it just focuses even more attention on them. And I mean, the, the monarchy is, is, as Prince Philip very wisely used to say, it's not about individuals, it's about the institution. And I think what has happened in this modern world, which is completely understandable, is it's just been very much focused on the individuals and and poor Kate has really um, come in as as the person that everybody's focused on. I think she would be very embarrassed by an apology, and I think what she really wants is for everything to just calm down and be left alone, which is completely understandable. It all sort of made sense, actually, Ingrid. Um, in retrospect, didn't it? The various timings, particularly wanting to communicate the news of her illness to her three young children. That was clearly at the forefront of all the decisions that she was making. Well, also, she she needed to recover enough to start her, you know, as she, as she told us, she was starting some chemotherapy treatment. But, I mean, I understand from, we all know people that have had, had cancer and we all know people whose children have had to be told. I understand that is the most difficult thing because, yeah. of course, children are frightened and they don't understand it. Why would they? And I think they were, and also they were worried. They said about um, what was going to be said at school, mm. and you know, at school, how wonderful the school is. You know, children, other children can be very cruel. Yeah, and so telling them on the eve, what she wanted to do was tell them on the eve of the children breaking up for the Easter holidays, so that she could then shield them from playground gossip. They can hang out with grandma at home and do all the Easter egg hunts and all of those normal things at this time of the year. She really is, I think, above all else, she's a remarkable mother, especially within that family that can be quite dysfunctional when it comes to parenting over the years. Yes, they certainly can be dysfunctional. But I think the one thing that, that the Queen really, really was happy about when she, she, you know, when William and Kate first, you know, became engaged was that, Kate came from such a stable family yeah. background. Very, you know, I mean, Sophie had come from a stable family background, but Fergie certainly hadn't. And of course, poor Diana certainly hadn't. Mm. And I think the Queen is a great believer in the stability in, the, in, early, in early life for children, which, of course, is one of the things that, that Kate is concentrating on now, the early yeah. years. And, and it's interesting because, of course, William and Kate's married strong and healthy. Um, Sophie and uh, uh, Prince Edward, I mean, that she, she, that he gave an interview very recently and it was very charming about, mm. you know, that, that's still a great love job. And, of course, we've seen in other parts of the royal family, Ingrid, where they've not had such a stable upbringing, disastrous marriages. Well, absolutely. I mean, uh, well, Diana and Charles were, Charles were obviously a mismatch, although Diana said later in her life that she wished that she'd met Charles at a different period in her life because they could have conquered the world together. I don't think they would have done for one moment. But that was her fantasy idea. Mm. And she was very anxious that, that, that their children, i.e. William and Harry, should know that Charles ha and she and Charles had been very much in love once. Mm. She was really really distressed by the fact that people said that, you know, they never loved each other. It's, I think, one of the, the things that I've kind of reflected on a bit in the last few weeks as well is, is quite how sidelined Meghan and Harry now mm. are when it comes to the royal Who? stories. Yeah. Um, I, I think they've issued a, a small statement, haven't they, Ingrid? But they're very much, uh, reflect, they're in the shadow of this much more important issue. Well, um, the, the interesting thing was that they didn't find out about uh, Kate's illness until we all found out about it, which means there is absolutely no communication there. And then they sent a message, whether they called or not, 
I'm, I'm sure I'm sure Megan got off straight on the phone because that's very Megan. But whether or not the call was taken, I don't know. I'd love to know. But I should think Kate was probably polite enough to to take any calls. But I just cannot see a, f- a friendship re re cementing at this moment. They've mm. got so many other things to think about. And, and uh, I mean, a lot of people think that illness brings people together, but I'm not sure about that. Yeah, and, and I think actually, um, Ingrid, the fact that they did find out from TV or radio the way the rest of us did, I think it's because William and Kate simply can't trust Harry and Meghan because other stuff they've been told is ends up on an American TV chat show or in his book or in a podcast or in a Netflix documentary. Well, I think also, sadly, I mean, obviously, that I don't feel that... The, well, the king and queen can't really trust Harry and Meghan either. Right. I think the whole royal family just want to keep them, you know, at, at a, a, a distance, which, of course, they are at the moment. But Harry is coming over here in May, I believe, to do, to do something with Invictus. So I think mm. we will see him. Mm. I don't know if we'll see Meghan. We're certainly mm. going to see Harry. So the story will go on. OK. All right. Thank you, Ingrid. Ingrid Stewart there. Um, and, of course... Kate, Catherine, or the King, still across the front pages yeah. of every single it, it, newspaper. Worldwide, this has been the most extraordinary story. Apparently, American TV news were broken into. You know, to, re- to, 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 have to, to have, the, to, to have mm. the princess's statement. It was mm. a masterstroke for her to do it herself, to camera herself. She wrote it herself. And you know what? It also reminds me, story, how clever GB News viewers and listeners are, because you lot out there were going on in our inbox all last week well. saying, stop talking about her. Stop talking about yep. it. Move on, move on. Yep. Just, just, just let the poor girl get well in peace and you should feel quite vindicated. <laughs> Going back to Meghan and Harry, though, last week it was announced that they'd been downgraded on the Buckingham Palace website. Oh, yeah. It is not a coincidence. It is yeah. not a coincidence because uh, the Princess of Wales filmed that video mm. on Wednesday and that announcement about them being downgraded mm. was on Thursday. So it all happened at the same time. They were just making it absolutely clear in case people think, oh, Harry and Meghan can come back. No, it's not happening. Yeah. There's no chance of it happening because they are not working members of the royal family anymore. They've made their decision and that's it. Yeah, we're moving on.